Right, it's uh Welcome. So here we have the original Chaitanya Chaitanya meters from 1975. These are the first print of the Chaitanya Chaitanya meter. So it's very rare and special edition which are gracing us today. And here we have a cat, Ginger Patel, also very rare. <laughs> All right, so it's Kato 2, Chapter 8, Text 16. This is questions by King Parikshit. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Alright, text 16. So this is Parikshit Mara speaking. Also, please describe the inner and outer space of the universe by specific divisions as well as the character and activities of the great souls and also the characteristics of the different classifications of the castes and orders of social life. Pol -pol. My Parikshi is a typical devotee of Lord Krishna and as such he is anxious to know the complete significance of the creation of the Lord. He wants to know the inner and outer space of the universe. <laughs> Jeepers. It is quite fitting for the real search of knowledge to know all about this. Those who are of the opinion that the devotee of, devotees of the Lord are satisfied with more sentiments can find in the inquiry of the Maharaj Pariksit good lessons as to how inquisitive a pure devotee is to know things in their true perfection. The modern scientist is unable to, uh, uh, is unable to know about the inner space of the universal horizon and what to speak of the space which covers the universe. Maharaj Parikshit is not satisfied with only material knowledge. He is inquisitive about the character and activities of the great souls, the devotees of the Lord. The glories of the Lord and the glories of his devotees combined together comprise the complete knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Krishna showed his mother the complete universal creation within his mouth while she completely charmed, while she completely charmed by her son wanted to look inside the mouth of, mouth of the Lord just to see how much earth the child had eaten. By the grace of the Lord, the devotees are able to see everything in the universe within the mouth of the Lord. The very idea of the scientific divisions of four classes of human society and four orders of life is also inquired about herewith on the basis of individual personal quality. The four divisions are exactly like the four divisions of one's personal body. The parts and parcels of the body are non-different from the body, but by themselves they are only parts. That is the significance of the whole scientific system of four castes and four social orders. The value of such scientific divisions of human society can be ascertained only in terms of the proportionate development of devotional service to the Lord. Any person employed in government service including the president is a part and parcel of the entire government everyone is a government servant but no one is the government himself that is the position of all living entities in the government of the supreme lord no one can artificially claim the supreme position of the lord but everyone is meant to serve the purpose of the supreme whole so it's a good uh, good explanation of how we're all meant to serve the serve the supreme whole uh, as parts and parcels and not that uh, we're meant to so much we work individually but we work collectively uh, together for the higher purpose of serving the whole mm. not unlike what's going on different places of the world where people are intent to not really think about the whole picture but just to be worried about their their specific little piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. so like that I think Srila Prabhupada said you should think globally and act locally. So like that. Text 17. Please explain all the different ages in the duration of the creation and also the duration of such ages. Also tell me about the different activities of the different incarnations of the Lord in different ages. Purport. Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all the incarnations of the Supreme Lord, although non-different from him, 
are emanations from the Supreme. Maharaj Pariksit inquired from the great and learned sage Shukadev Goswami about the different activities of such incarnations, so that the incarnation of the Lord might be confirmed by his activities in the authoritative scriptures. Maharaj Pariksha was not to be carried away by the sentiments of the common man to accept an incarnation of the Lord very cheaply. Instead, he wished <coughs> sorry, instead, he wished to accept the incarnation of the Lord by symptoms mentioned in the Vedic literatures <coughs> and confirmed by an Acharya like Shukadev Goswami. The Lord descends by his internal energy without any obligation to the laws of material nature, and thus his activities are also uncommon. The specific activities of the Lord are mentioned, and one should know that the activities of the Lord and the Lord himself are identical, due to being on the absolute plane. Thus, to hear the activities of the Lord means to associate with the Lord directly, and association with the Lord directly means purification from material contamination. We have already discussed this point in the previous volume. So just by hearing now this, what we're reading, we're associating with the Supreme Lord. Mm, very nice. Text 18. Please also explain what may generally be the common religious affiliations of human society as well as the specific occupational duties in religion, the classification of the social orders as well as the administrative royal orders, and the religious principles for one who may be in distress. The common religion of all classes of human beings, regardless of whosoever and whatsoever one may be, is devotional service. Even the animals may be included in devotional service to the Lord. And the best example is set by Sri Raj Rangaji or Hanuman, the great devotee of Lord Sri Ram. As we have already discussed, even the Aborigines and cannibals can also be engaged in the devotional service of the Lord if they happen to be under the guidance of a genuine devotee of the Lord. Hmm. In the Sakanda Purana, there is a narration that a hunter in the jungle became the most enlightened devotee of the Lord by the guidance of Sri Narada Muni. Hmm. Therefore, devotional oh service to the Lord can be equally shared by every living being. Yeah, the story of Mrigari the hunter. Yeah, it's mm. a very powerful transformational story. Mm. Religious affiliation in terms of different countries and cultural circumstances is obviously not the common religion of the human being. <clears throat> Rather, the basic principle is devotional service. Even if a particular type of religious principle does not recognize the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the followers still have to obey the disciplinary principles laid down by a particular leader. Such a leader of a religious sect is never the supreme leader, because such a circumstantial leader comes to the position of leadership after undergoing some penance. The Supreme Personality of Godhead does not, however, require to be under disciplinary action to become a leader as we in the activities of Lord Krishna, as we see in the activities of Lord Krishna. The occupational duties of the caste and the orders of society following the principles of livelihood also depend on the principle of devotional service. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that a person can achieve the highest perfection of life simply by awarding the results of his occupational duty unto the devotional service of the Lord. People following the principles of devotional service of the Lord can never be put into difficulty, and thus there cannot be any question of apad dharma, or religion in distress. As will be explained in this book by the greatest authority, Srila Sukadev Goswami, there is no religion save and except the devotional service of the Lord, though this may be presented in different forms. Hmm. So devotional service of the Lord is the, not only the, uh, it's the supreme religion. It, I mean, not supreme religion, but it's the only religion, devotional service to God. But it may take many different forms. So we may serve the Lord in many different ways, mm -hmm. and we may extrapolate many different processes by which to 
engage in this religion, which is devotional service, but every religion is basically meant for service to God. Mm -hmm. So text 19, kindly explain all about the elementary principles of creation, the number of such elementary principles, their causes, and their development, and also the process of devotional service and, meth and the method of mystic powers. It's a lot of questions. Yeah, very detailed, specific mm -hmm. questions, mm -hmm. which means he probably already has some idea of the answers. What are the opulences of the great mystics and what is their ultimate realization? How does the perfect mystic become detached from the subtle astral body? What is the basic knowledge of the Vedic literatures, including the branches of history and the supplementary Puranas? Purport. The Yogeshwara, or the master of mystic powers, can exhibit eight kinds of wonders of perfection by becoming smaller than the atom or lighter than a feather, getting anything and everything he desires, going anywhere and everywhere he likes, creating even a planet in the sky, etc. There are many Yogeshwaras having different proficiencies in these wonderful powers, and the topmost of all of them is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is the greatest yogi, and he can perform such wonderful things, far beyond the ordinary living beings. The devotees of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of God, the devotees of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, do not directly practice the process of mystic powers, but by the grace of the Lord, his devotee can defeat even a great Yogeshwara like Dorvasa Muni, who picked a quarrel with Maharaj Ambarish, and wanted to show the wonderful achievements of his mystic powers. Maharaj Ambarish was a pure devotee of the Lord, and thus without any effort on his part, the Lord saved him from the wrath of Yogeshwara, Durvasa Muni. And the latter was obliged to beg pardon from the king. Similarly, at the time of Draupadi's precarious situation, when she was attacked by the crews who wanted to see her naked in the open assembly of the royal order, the Lord saved her from being stripped by supplying an unlimited length of sari to cover her. And Draupadi knew nothing of mystic powers. Therefore, the devotees are also Yogeshwaras by the unlimited power of the Lord, just as a child is powerful by the strength of the parents, they do not try to protect themselves by any artificial means, but are saved by the mercy of the parents. Nice example. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maharaj Pariksha inquired from the learned Brahmana Sukadev Goswami about the ultimate destination of such great mystics or how they attain such extraordinary powers by their own efforts or by the grace of the Lord. He inquired also about their detachment from the subtle and gross material bodies. He inquired also about the purports of the Vedic knowledge. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 1515, the whole purpose of all the Vedas is to know the supreme personality of Godhead and thus become a transcendental loving servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Text 21. Please explain unto me how the living beings are generated, and how they are maintained, and how they are annihilated. Tell me also of the advantages and disadvantages of discharging devotional service unto the Lord. What are the Vedic rituals and injunctions of the supplementary Vedic rites? What are the pro procedures of religion, economic development, and sense gratification? Questions don't keep coming. I mean, I can't remember all the questions he's asked, and Shukadeva Goswami is sitting there, so I'm presuming, you know, he's not necessarily taking notes, but he's remembering all these, <laughs> all these questions. Samplavaha, in the sense of perfect means, is employed to denote the discharging of devotional service. And prati samplavaha means just the opposite, 
or that which destroys the progress of devotional service. One who is firmly situated in the devotional service of the Lord can very easily execute the function of conditioned, conditional life. Living the conditioned life is just like playing a, playing a boat in the middle of the ocean. Mm. One is completely at the mercy of the ocean. And at every moment, there is every chance of being drowned in the ocean by slight agitation. Mm. If the atmosphere is all right, the boat can ply very easily, undoubtedly. But if there is some storm, fog, wind, or cloud, there is every possibility of being drowned in the ocean. Mm -hmm. No one can control the whims of the ocean. However, one may be materially well equipped. One who has crossed the oceans by ship may have sufficient experience of such dependence upon the mercy of the ocean. But one can ply over the ocean of material existence by the grace of the Lord very easily, without any fear of storm or fog. It all depends on the will of the Lord. And no one can help if there is some unfortunate danger in the state of conditional life. Let's read that again. It all depends on the will of the Lord. No one can help it help no one can help if there is some unfortunate danger in the state of conditional life. It means we have to depend on the Lord. No one can do anything really to save themselves. The devotees of the Lord, however, cross the ocean of material existence without anxiety because a pure devotee is always protected by the Lord. 9.13 of the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord gives special attention to his devotees and their activities within material and conditioned life. 9.29 of Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, everyone should take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord and be a pure devotee of the Lord by all means. One should know, therefore, from the expert spiritual master, the advantages and disadvantages of discharging devotional service, just as Maharaj Parikshi asked his spiritual master, Srila Sukadeva Goswami. According to Bhaktin Rasamrita Sindhu, the science of devotional service, one should not eat more than what he requires to maintain body and soul together, which obviously differs to different people. <laughs> Vegetable diets and milk are sufficient for maintenance of the human body, and therefore one has no need to eat anything more to satisfy the palate. One should also not accumulate money to become puffed up in the material world. One should earn his livelihood easily and honestly, for it is better to become a coolie for an honest livelihood than to become a great man in society by hook and crook. <laughs> there is no harm if one becomes the richest man in the world by honest dealings, but one should not sacrifice the honest means of livelihood simply to accumulate wealth. Hmm. Such an endeavour is harmful to devotional service. One should not talk nonsense. <laughs> a devotee's business is to earn the favour of the Lord. Therefore, a devotee should always glorify the Lord in his wonderful creations. A devotee should not decry the creation of the Lord, defying him by saying that he has created a false world. The world is not false. Actually, we have to take so many things from the world for our maintenance. So how can we say that the world is false? Similarly, how can one think of the Lord as being without form? How can one become formless and at the same time have all intelligence and consciousness, direct and indirect? Mm -hmm. So there are many things for a bona fide devotee to learn. And he should learn them perfectly from a bona fide personality like Sukadev Goswami. Mm. <clears throat> and it's a nice point about... Um uh, how, that it's okay to become rich in one sense, mm -hmm. but not at the sacrifice of honesty or mm -hmm. integrity. Yeah, yeah. And this, yeah, this word coolly. There's um, in India, those those are like the sudra types. Go, you know, when we went to India, I, that's when I learnt the term with my family. The people that have the porters, they carry things. Mm -hmm. Menial people, not really well respected nowadays, anyway. Yeah, unskilled native laborer in India, China, and other Asian countries. Mm -hmm. So 
So basically it means someone who's low class. Mm -hmm. Better to be someone low class for an honest, honest livelihood than to become a great man in society by hook and crook. It's true. So very nice. <clears throat> so carrying on our reading. The fa of the, this purport, the favorable conditions for discharging devotional service are that one should be very enthusiastic in serving the Lord. The Lord in his form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted, to, wanted the cult of devotional service to the Lord to be preached all over the world in every nook and corner. And therefore, pure devotee's duty is to discharge this order as far as possible. Every devotee should be very enthusiastic, not only in performing his daily rituals of devotional service, but in trying to preach the cult peacefully by following in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya. If he is not superficially successful in such an attempt, he should not be deterred from the discharge of his duty. Success or failure has no meaning for a pure devotee, because he is a soldier in the field. Preaching the cult of devotional service is something like declaring war on the materialistic life. So this is a very nice preaching statement about pure devotees and how their duty is to spread the mission and, uh, and do missionary work and how they should never be discouraged um, by not getting the result that, that they want, you know? So even if we don't get the result that we want, we, even if we don't get the result that we're after, we shouldn't be discouraged, we should carry on with our preaching. So there are different kinds of materialists, such as the fruitive workers, the mental speculators, the mystic jugglers, and so many others. All of them are against the existence of God. <clears throat> they would declare that they are themselves God. Although in every step and in every action they are dependent on the mercy of God. Therefore, pure devotee may not associate with such gangs of atheists. <laughs> A strong devotee of the Lord will not be misled by such atheistic propaganda of the non-devotees. But a neophyte devotee should be very cautious about them. A devotee should see to the right just, sorry, a devotee should see to the right discharge of devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master and should not stick only to the formalities. Under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, one should see how much service is being executed and not simply in the matter of rituals. A devotee should not hanker after anything, but he should be satisfied with things that may automatically come to him by the will of the Lord. That should be the principle of a devotional life. And all these principles are easily learned under the guidance of a spiritual master like Shukadev Goswami. Maharaj Parikshit inquired from Shukadev correctly, and one should follow his example. So there is a proper way to make inquire, a proper way to approach the spiritual master. Very good. Maharaj Pariksha inquired about the process of creation, maintenance, and destruction of the material world, the process of Vedic rituals, and the method of executing pious activities in terms of the supplementary Vedas and the Puranas of Mahabharata. As explained before, the Mahabharata is the history of ancient India, and so also are the Puranas. Pious acts are prescribed in the supplementary Vedas, Smritis, which specifically mention digging tanks and wells for the water supply of the people in general, to plant trees on the public roads, to construct public temples and places of worship of God, to establish places of charity where the poor destitutes can be provided with foodstuff and similar activities are called purta. Hmm, interesting. Similarly, the process of fulfilling the natural desires for sense gratification was also inquired about by the king for the benefit of all. Interesting that these charitable activities, it says, are mentioned in the uh, Puranas, right? Mm -hmm. Pi no, pious acts are also mentioned in the Smriti, in the Smriti knowledge, in the Smriti wisdom. Okay, shall we you know, stop there? Just do one more. 
Please also explain how merged in the body of the Lord living beings are created and how the infidels appear in the world. Also, please explain how the unconditioned living entities exist. Mm. Well put. The progressive devotee of the Lord must inquire from the bona fide spiritual master how living entities merged in the body of the Lord again come back at the time of creation. There are two kinds of living entities. They are the ever-liberated unconditioned living beings as well as the ever-conditioned living beings. Of the ever-conditioned living beings, there are two divisions. They are the faithful and the infidels. Of the faithful, there are again two divisions, namely the devotees and the mental speculators. The mental speculators desire to merge into the existence of the Lord or to become one with the Lord, whereas the devotees of the Lord desire to keep separate identities and constantly engage in the service of the Lord. The devotees who are not fully purified, as well as the empiric philosophers, become conditioned again during the next creation for further purification. Such conditioned souls become liberated by further progress of devotional service to the Lord. Maharaj Parikshu asked all these questions from the bona fide spiritual master in order to become fully equipped in the science of God. Mm. Yeah, it looks like... Uh, yeah, it looks like we're kind of coming to the end of, of his questions. So. <coughs> okay, so should we conclude there? Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much uh, for joining us and uh, hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam. So, uh, yeah, as we mentioned earlier, this is a, a set we just have uh, come across and been gifted, uh, which is uh, actual original, original set. You can see because inside... Um, they're in really, really good condition also. Oh, let's see, maybe something. Mm -hmm. so this one's got 1973, but this one also says third printing 1987. Some of them are different, so maybe it's not a... I hadn't looked at each and every book. But anyway, these are very old, and some of them are definitely from the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this one, this one is uh, from the first printing, um, 1975. So, uh, so yeah, some of them are original. I think it's just the Adi Leela that's uh, that's hmm. a later version and missing. So, very beautiful and wonderful. Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. So anyway, all right. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Hare all glories to Shiva Prabhupada.